Y'all good? Okay, I think that's it, eh? Okay, so I just wanted to point out, I talked so good about this underlayment and stuff like that. It's definitely a harder underlayment. As a matter of fact, if you'll notice over here on this side of the room, you see a lot more circles where the staples wasn't getting sunk in as much versus over here, you hardly see any. Well, the reason why I didn't realize Jerry was having such a difficult time I was just running in and out, cutting, placing boards and stuff like that. But what, what the deal was, it took about 20 more pounds of pressure to sink the staples in this versus it did to uh, sink the staples in the underlayment that we're used to using. So this is definitely a harder. You can see my outgoing pressure right here. I put it on about 90, about 95 degrees where that's about 20 pounds higher than I usually use, okay? And um, what Jerry was doing just then, anywhere there was a circle where a staple was sticking up, let me see here. So right here where this, this staple was up, this staple was up. Remember I said we like to sand them down. We don't want to beat them down. So this staple was up, this was up. Um, what we do, we, we'll, when we sand that off, it don't leave no head. It only leaves two little prongs, which ain't gonna hold nothing. So anywhere that we left a staple um, up, we want to go around it with a couple more staples because once we sand the head of that off, it's not going to have nothing to really hold the underlayment down. So everywhere that there was a circle where a staple was up, we actually put a few more staples right around it just for extra support because I'm fixing to sand that head off. Then there's not going to be nothing but two legs holding it, and that's just gonna be like little finish nails. That's not gonna be any count. Anyway, let me show you the underlayment here. I thought it was all gonna be all perfect and square. I guess this, like I said, I haven't, I haven't used this underlayment since, uh, since Tennessee, and I've been here for seven years. So I guess just the quality of everything has gone downhill, or maybe it was because I was not so picky back then. I don't know what the deal is, but anyway, it wasn't all, it didn't live up to the hype that I had imagined and remembered it being. So I just wanted to point this out here too. As you can see, we do got some floor patch throughout. Um, but you can see here, see the gap here. It's all the way down and then it gets tight. This is about a foot right here. The center is tight and then maybe a foot from the edge, it starts gapping open again. So I don't know, I don't know what the deal is with lumber yards or whatever, not being able to make true lumber anymore. But anyway, if anybody finds out any, any really good underlayment, I would love to know. Um, this is, this is, it's pretty good as far as the solidness and the way it cuts and everything like that, but it's still not as true as I would like to have. I don't know if we'll ever find anything as true as, you know, that's just gonna be perfect. I mean, look, the same thing here. We got a little gap right here. And then it's all tight down through the center again. All tight, all tight, all tight. And then it gets loose again right here. So, same thing here. See this? 
and then it's tight and then it gets loose again so none of it's perfect I don't guess so um, like I said I do remember this being a better product than that even though I am very satisfied it's definitely a lot denser like I said it took 20 more pounds of pressure to get it in to get the staple sunk um, so what we did we just took the the gaps I mean this is a LVT going down so it ain't got to be like it ain't like we're putting a super thin vinyl in it or nothing like that so the small gaps are acceptable but anything that you know I, I just didn't want to leave anything that would have any reason at all to cause any kind of issue so we, we did fill anything that I could probably fit uh, maybe a quarter in I filled so it's LVT anything else other than that you're not really going to have to worry about it but we are fixing the sand uh, we're going to install this living room today we got other furniture that we need to get out so we got to do this kitchen and bedroom and stuff like that back in that office we want to get this room done so we can pile it full of furniture and and start working elsewhere so we're going to focus on getting this done today i am fixing to go ahead and sand all these seams everywhere there was a staple and then we'll sweep it up vacuum around the edges and all that stuff and we'll be ready to go something i want to point out about sanding these things really eat i mean you can uh it's kind of like maybe a belt sander would would uh would chew up a lot of material real fast so i've actually I actually left an old pad on here that way it, it don't just dig in and leave leave little dips and stuff in the wood I only want to take the edge off if one's higher uh, a little bit of extra mud like this I want to get that stuff off and the high staples see it right here I can barely feel that I just want to, I just want to get that as smooth as possible so I don't want to dip it I just want to get it smooth so Okay, we're going to sand, get to this. I'll talk a little bit more about it. When we start the LVP, I'll show you how we get started and stuff like that. And because uh, it is an LVT, so we're going to stagger it pretty much like we did the, the uh, underlayment. And uh, we're going to go half, exactly half on that. So we'll talk about that in a few minutes. keeping my sander moving real fast I don't want it to dig say for instance right back here this was off just a little bit so I did have to get in it just a little bit but I didn't just stop right here I tapered it on back like that just so it wasn't feathered out and if, if you see this this is what I want to point out here see how this is sanded and this is not sanded well there's a good it's, on, it's almost a fact that this is going to be lower than this because the sander is only riding on one side of that. So if you see one side not touched, you can still feel that. Watch this. See that? Back here where both sides are touched? One right over, right there. So that lets you know if the sander is not touching both sides, whichever side it's not touching, it's going to be lower and you need to do a little bit more work to it okay even if you just reach down there and feel with your fingers to check it just to make sure it's good and always run your sander fast don't 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 sit in one spot because you're going to dig a dip in the plywood and it's going to mess it's going to be noticeable when the light hits it so i just wanted to point that out about that right there about not hitting both sides of it make sure both sides get sanded even though it looks pretty good to the eye this side did not get hit the sander floated right across it so that so i recently got a new uh staple gun for underlayment i had the same one for like 20 years and uh the push rod in it finally broke 
Jerry does not like my my new one. He says it's 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 too slow for him. It slows him down. He says, just listen at him. guy's a beast so I don't know if you noticed in, in uh, a few minutes ago when I was showing this but this actually right here this whole this office and this area the laundry room here is an add-on that's why this room was so thick well it was actually about uh, an inch maybe three-quarters of an inch lower than the original part of the mobile home here so the, the, the homeowner what he did he put his when he fixed his floor he put the board there then he put a little thinner board and then a little thinner board and then he floated it out with that uh with the white stuff right there you can see that so me coming four foot from over here which is the length of the board which was going to put my seam right here in the middle of of that uh white brittle stuff so i didn't want to do that as you can see i put a ton of staples in that that way I just didn't have any creaking or popping or anything. So anyway, what I did, I pushed it all the way over past that. That way when it joins back up here, it would be, uh, it'll be nice and flat here as the same as it was here. And I got one consecutive piece, got one consecutive piece of wood over, uh, over all that sloping and stuff right there. He didn't want to step because they are, this is a 55 and up um, mobile home park so they've got a little bit of age on them and they didn't want to step they want he 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 fixed it and he said this is how i want it just to go over it so to prevent a step that's why he floated it out like that but anyway point being is i put my fill piece here which was about six inches rather than having it six inches shorter here and having it on that slope uh, i wanted to have one consecutive piece over that slope there. That way, um, the thicknesses of joining my next piece to it. Plus, it been a seam right dead on that white stuff. I didn't want to do that, so that was the purpose of one consecutive um, piece flowing down over that. We got all the furniture uh, moved out of the office. We got the washer and dryer and stuff like that out. Um, and what I've seen now that I can see the floor pretty good This room did get water damage, but it was not like standing water to where it swelled up really bad Like along the inside of that wall there where the gentleman had to replace the floor But it did get enough. I don't know if you can really tell or not right here This is all it's dipped in between each nail. It's like dip 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 everywhere. There's a nail. It's like the floor is kind of wavy so I'm not even comfortable putting underlaying it on that like that. So before before we even install the underlayment, I am going to take my edger. I'm going to sand over this real good and get it just as smooth as possible. You're going to underlayment is not a fix all. It's a if your floor is wavy, if your floor goes like that, and you put your underlayment down. And you put it down like it's supposed to, you staple it as often as you're supposed to. It's still going to look like that when you get done. It's just going to be a smooth wave instead of a rough wave. Rather than like if I just put the vinyl over this, it'd be rough. But if I just put the underline on this, you'd still feel the little waviness, the little waviness of the floor. So we're going to take a few minutes, maybe 10 or 15 minutes, whatever it takes to sand this down here pretty good. And, uh, Get it right before we put the underlayment down. So like I said, underlayment is not a fix all. It just gives a smooth surface for uh, vinyl and uh, tiles and stuff like that. So just wanted to point that out. So if somebody was to come along and see this, that's really not going to be good enough to put underlayment on, okay? Okay, so as you can see, we got everything sanded up. I even went over the nail heads and the seams. 
with the edger. Now we are ready for um, we're ready for some vinyl. I mean, uh, sweep this out. We'll be ready for underlayment, and we're gonna run and cut the door jams. We need to do that in here because this had carpet down. But outside of that, we're ready to uh, sweep it and put some underlayment down. This one's gonna go real fast too because it's all square. So this is where the refrigerator sat. You can see where the gentleman stopped working. Right here when he was replacing all the rotten floor because uh, obviously he didn't want to deal with that big bulky refrigerator by himself. So he just stopped right here. Well the refrigerator had about a maybe an inch and a half gap at the bottom and it was actually touching at the top. So if you look down right here you can still you can see where the sag is. Come right here where you can see underneath the straight edge. Can you see that? See how much room I got underneath here? Oops, see my finger under there? That's how much of a sag we got right there. Just because this side of the trailer was sagging and all the water sat there. So, again, I'm going to do the same thing I did over there. Only he didn't fill it here, which is good because we don't have to chip it out. So, I'm going to take this birch. You can see about how thick it is right there. I'll hold it real still there. About how thick it is. We'll check this out. I'm going to just place it there and uh, now look. I'm going to mess it down there on the floor. Guys. It's, it's going to be almost almost perfect. So it ain't it ain't going to be quite, you know, it ain't going to be 100%, but it's definitely going to be better than it was. The refrigerator's not going to be leaning like it was and stuff like that. But what I'll do with this edge right here and right here, I'll just hit it with my sander like I did over there sand it down like real paper thin and put some tape over it just to hold it till we cover it up with underlayment. That should take care of that little swag in the floor there for the refrigerator. 